Good afternoon, everybody. Um, Andy Hazelton here. Uh, as you may have seen or heard, um, we have a pretty serious situation unfolding in the Gulf of Mexico right now. Uh, this satellite picture should tell you what that is. If you ha haven't seen it already, this is Hurricane Milton, which has explosively intensified today into a Category 5 with 175 mile per hour winds. Some of our models um, were hinting at this. Um, it's happened even a little faster than forecast. and. Yeah, it's a pretty serious situation as it moves uh, just north of Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula today. Uh, looking at the, the radar, we'll zoom in here. Um, this is a radar out of uh, central Mexico um, in, near the Yucatan. You can see a very, very, it's a very compact storm right now, very small eye. Um, it's moving just north of the Yucatan. Um, we'll see if that has any impact on it, the land there. It may not move right over it. Uh, we'll see if it is able to disrupt it at all and, and stop it further strengthening. Uh, the other thing that it's going to try to do is you can see there's this uh, second ring forming um, kind of around the eye. That's so we may try to get an eye wall set replacement cycle, but that would just make the storm larger and it, it could re-intensify. So a very serious situation um, in the eastern gulf um, coming up. This is the um, hurricane uh, recon flight for this morning. Um, get, basically, these are vortex data messages. These are basically where the center was found, and it's got some information about it, and it's just pretty remarkable. The pressure fell from 947 millibars at the start of the flight to 912 at the end as the, the winds increased to Category 5 intensity, and this this is one of the faster intensifying storms we've ever seen in the Atlantic. It's it's up there with Wilma in 2005, Rita in 2005, Katrina, Gilbert in uh, 1988. It, it's up there, and this is uh, it's pretty extreme. So where's this going? Um, unfortunately, we're still looking at um, the uh, the track just north of the Yucatan, and then up here somewhere into the Tampa Bay area by late Wednesday night. You have hurricane watches up uh, for much of the Florida west coast and inland. A tropical storm watches north and south of that. Hurricane warnings here for the north coast of Mexico. Uh, it's still a little too early to say for sure. Like I said, we're in the Bay Area. Um, it still could be anywhere in this area. Uh, if we look at the uh, Look at the, some of the ensembles. You can see, um, again, kind of a, a spread, north to south spread, anywhere from Charlotte Harbor to maybe Crystal River. Um, it's going to kind of come up. Uh, whoops, let me get this color back to this one. It's going to kind of come up here um, in the eastern Gulf and then turn a little more um, northeast. And then, yeah, so like I said, if it's a sharper turn, maybe you head up more towards, you know, just north of Tampa Bay. A uh, little bit less of a turn, you go just south of Tampa Bay. And that's going to be, again, pretty uh, pretty critical for uh, which area gets the worst storm surges, like I said, because of the, the winds blowing this way. Whichever um, area south of the center is going to get the worst storm surge. But it's just, unfortunately, it's too early to say for sure where that's going to be. <clears throat> Looking at the, uh, the European ensemble, kind of the same idea. Um, sort of the center, um, the mean is, is right on the mouth of Tampa Bay, so that sort of seems to be our area we're honing in, but it could be a little north, could be a little bit south of that. Um, and one thing I wanted to talk about is um, what's going to happen with the intensity. So our HAFS B model, the one this is the model I've been working on, actually did a pretty good job of um, in the short term of showing some of this intensification. Shows it kind of weakening tonight due to that eyewall cycle I told you about, but then actually reintensifies it um, to, again to a very strong Category Five um, over the Southeast Gulf over the the warm loop current waters. One thing it shows though is it shows it weakening pretty quickly um, near landfall as it kind of gets up into this uh, this wind shear, higher upper level winds over the eastern Gulf. This may or may not happen. Um, we have uh, the HRF model, which is another good um, NOAA model that's been run for many years. Shows some weakening, but again, keeps it pretty strong. Shows like a strong category three at landfall. So, you know, maybe it's not a category five, maybe it's a category three, category four. Uh, but either way, this is gonna get larger. It's gonna produce a lot of storm surge. You're gonna have inland impacts. And one thing I wanted to show with this is that this is Hurricane Katrina. This was a Category 5 in the Gulf of Mexico. You can see as it approached New Orleans, you know, you can see how this inner eye kind of started to degrade a little bit. You got this outer eye getting larger. So it did weaken. It weakened from a Category 5 to a 3 as it moved into New Orleans. It kind of looks like what we're looking at here, right? That little small inner eye decays, get a much larger eye. And, what it, and we know that Katrina produced one of the most devastating storm surges on record. And obviously, uh, Tampa doesn't have a lake north of it, but it is one of the most surge vulnerable areas in the world. And I think this is kind of what we're looking at. If this makes a direct impact into Tampa Bay, it could be a surge event rivaling something like Katrina, some of the worst surge events we've seen. So this is something to take seriously. If you live in an evacuation zone, I think we've seen evacuation orders today. Take them seriously. Don't play with this one. This is um, not worth risking your life on. 
And so there's inland threats as well. We have uh, a lot of heavy rain. There's sort of a stalled front, another weak area of low pressure moving east ahead of Milton. Um, this is a lot of rain over the Miami area. So flood watches are up. So And this is just going to make uh, the flooding conditions worse as the, the hurricane moves um, toward the Florida Peninsula midweek. In terms of timing, um, <clears throat> this is important because as tropical storm winds um, increase, that sort of uh, cuts off your ability to do some of these preparations and bridges and things like that. So this is the uh, possible earliest arrival time of tropical storm force winds, and you're kind of looking at about Wednesday morning along the Florida West Coast. So really, preparations need to be ideally finalized today, and, and really tomorrow is your last day to do it. Wednesday, just, just hunker down and start, you hope for the best because... By you know Wednesday morning late, we might be starting to get into nasty weather, and which would make pre preparations very difficult. One other thing that I wanted to show this is a product that I think is really useful. This is the uh, the hazardous uh, threat index um, hurricane or sorry hurricane threats and impacts um, for from the uh, the Tampa Bay area. Um, this is the wind threat. So you can see this is kind of on a scale of one to five a little bit. Um, you can see, so, you know, yellow being like 3957. So like the Miami area, will probably get some tropical storm force winds out of this. But you can see they have right now the I-4 corridor is pretty much all in the sort of this like four or in the Tampa area level five um, for winds over 110 miles an hour potentially. So this could be a really serious wind event, certainly at the coast and even stretching inland along the I-4 corridor. Lots of trees down, lots of power outages. And that that's a big problem. In terms of storm surge, we're looking at anywhere from 9 to 12 feet, maybe even more in spots, like I said, especially just to the right of where the center comes in. Um, Tampa Bay, this whole area is very vulnerable. Charlotte Harbor, Sarasota, Manatee, all of this is, is uh, potentially um, in, a, in line for some serious coastal surge and, some, and flooding. And this killed a lot of people with Ian, so please take this seriously. Don't let yourself become one of the statistics. And in terms of the flooding rain threat, like I said, um, pretty major flooding potential in South Florida, Central Florida. The storm itself will be moving pretty fast, but a lot of rain out ahead of it. So, you know, on already saturated ground could certainly cause some flooding issues. And also um, the tornado threat all across the peninsula. Anytime you have these landfalling hurricanes, especially on the right side out ahead of it, you get these tornadoes and that could happen here as well. So very severe threat. Take it seriously. Finalize preparations if you're in a mobile home, if you're near a the coast in a flood zone or you know low-lying area evacuate heed local officials stay tuned to the weather service get your information from trustworthy sources don't play it um, loose take this one seriously and be safe everybody